Michael Jackson's Thriller Album. Stories in the Room. This is Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. Join film composer Anthony Marinelli, who programmed synthesizers for seven songs on Thriller. And a and veteran film producer Stephen Ray, who assisted Quincy Jones and was in the studio every day with Quincy and Michael. Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. I'm Anthony Marinelli with my longtime close friend and co-host, Stephen Ray, bringing you the real stories directly from the talented people in the room with us during the making of Thriller, the greatest selling album of all time. Can the the three of you speak to that? Like, how is it different recording records since Thriller? And how did it progress to now? Like, when you go in and, and, like, you don't see the rhythm section. I know you guys came in with finished tracks, right? But it, how, is it a different experience now compared to back then? And, and, and magic, did the magic change? Who wants to take I don't that? know if, it, if the magic necessarily changed. It's, it's just a different way of recording now that, that, than we did back in the day, as, as I call it. We've seen so many changes. Cause yeah. when, when, we, when we started off, we were in, at Gold Star yeah. and everybody was, it was, in there at the same you time. Know, we did, and we did. Uh, and yeah, evolved there from weren't that. even earphones then. No, it had the speakers. The we speakers. had speakers <laughs> even. So we've seen everything. Now we can sing, well, as you guys know, not, this has been in a while ago that we started flying stuff in yes. yeah. and didn't have yeah. to sing everything right. all over again. Right, you know? right, right. That's right. digital. But Gold Star, yep. Gold Star was like a three, they had a three track. I mean, they had to get everybody because you couldn't have yeah, the uh, tracks on there. So that's a big difference, like having the people in the room and interacting. And yeah, yeah. the evolution of it. Sometimes um, uh, certain producers want to recapture that. And so they will have the live band and, and stuff like that. And the singers, uh, now we have the sec- they're sectioned off yeah. and stuff like that. But some of the uh, producers that want to reach back to the old way of recording still... Uh, very seldom, but they still do it sometimes. And to me, the magic in the moment is there being with the people. Yeah. yeah. Being with the people. Yeah, being with the real that in and out yes. and running into the guys yes. and then running into the The tempo may us. change. The tempo of the yeah. song may change. You could do all of that kind of stuff because everybody's there. You can change the tempos and stuff now, but it's something about the the musicianship, the touch yeah. of the musician real and musicians. things like that. It just creates a... Uh, uh, exactly. uh, uh, a thing in the air. Well, how were Michael and, and when you? Re- I'm sorry. Um, I just it just triggered something in my mind. The thing in the air, but like compare, like compare Quincy and Michael, that duo, uh, producer artist, to any other. Was there something different about them? Well, Michael was out in the studio. Every time we went in, Michael was out in the studio with us. So we he always sang with us whenever we did any vocals that way. And Quincy was the, the man in the, in the- Inside uh, the booth. In, in the booth. You know what too? Both of them are quiet people. It, 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 you know, to work with them, it's, it's quiet, nice, peaceful. quiet, peaceful. Both of Quincy's quiet like that, and Michael was quiet like that. That's now true. that I'm just now thinking that about is true. it, mm-hmm. was, we probably was the know, loudest ones in there. <laughs> yeah, just really. Hey, you got that right. Yeah, their tem- <laughs> their temperaments were really. I could see why they could work together. Work together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know what I find interesting is that the evolution of that word evolution of their relationship. You had a previous relationship with, with Michael and you had, and then you had a previous relationship with Quincy. So there's a level of comfortability there on both their parts because they're so familiar with you and your energy and, and your performances and knowing, and knowing, knowing that, that you're going to deliver. That is very true. You know, that, very yes. confident that you're going to deliver. Yes. Because, yes. Because Michael, as you know, you know, I have a hard, I, I have to remember to call him Michael because when, when, we were together. I always called him Smelly, you know. Right, oh, I remember right, that. Oh, right. right. Which I'm sure made him feel comfortable because Michael always desired a certain uh, uh, ability to kind of be normal. That's right. That he he it's was possible. really never able to achieve exactly. because of his 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 uh, his genius. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And from what my observation was of of Michael. 
uh, his level of uh, perfection. Oh my God. He was God. a perfection. All his moves and everything that he would do, it was just worked out to the T. And so to me, he had a, uh, a Zen type of thing about him. That yeah. Michael turned that stuff on and he, and you could almost see the superhero stuff come out his hand and he'd do yeah. a move and it just, it, it would electrify the whole audience. I mean, thousands yeah. of people at once. It would just go through everybody. And that yeah. was, uh, to me, one of the things that besides his natural blessing, he cultivated it by being having that perfection. But what yeah. it also did, it kept him from being able to be regular. I remember one time we were in the studio and um, uh, uh, Maxine, who is a jogger, and James Ingram, God rest his soul, also jog. And yes, so they were talking about jogging. So Michael was like, well, where do you guys jog at? <laughs> And they were saying, well, we, <laughs> we're going, we going the to the park or run down the street, wherever. you know what I mean, or wherever. Yeah. And, he tried, to, he, and he, like, wow. he tried to go across the street to the hamburger stand. And we all tried to talk him out of it. And, and he, he went out that doggone he door. Got back he got in. chased back in that door. <laughs> let me back in. Let me he back put, in. He had put a hat on and all of that stuff, thinking that he was going to be disguised from his hair and everything. He said, no, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I want to go out. He went out and went and before we could turn around, he was back in there and he was actually hyperventilating yeah. Yeah. because yeah. he had gotten so upset because people recognized him no matter what. So it was like, wow, the young man can't even go out and just take yeah. a little slight little walk down yeah. the street without yeah. somebody trying to pull his clothes to, off yeah, exactly. or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, and that was terrifying to him. He's very terrifying. Anthony knows the story of, you know, we got chased, him and I got chased out of the Beverly Center. Um, you know, the multi-tracks locked up one particular day and we got chased. Literally, Michael wanted to go to the toy store yeah. <laughs> and he put on the disguise and we ended up getting chased out of the Beverly Center. Yeah, yeah. Running back to Westlake and he was hyperventilating and really, really, and like 15 girls was chasing him. You know, Sometime grown you know, women too. Yeah. Sometimes grown yeah. women, Steve, not oh, just no, no, no. no, they weren't all girls. Right. They weren't all girls. Yeah, yeah he didn't you. like that. But see, at the same time, we were working with uh, Rick James, too. And he loved all that. He was like, oh. jump on me. Let me go out here in public. No disguise. <laughs> yeah, ask me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it just yeah. depends, you know, on, on the personality. On your personality. Yeah. 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 Michael, but Michael had been so sheltered all of his life, he didn't know how didn't know how to react to yeah. that type of a situation. No, he because he, he desired, like you're saying, or he desired, he never had a childhood. And he he, right. Had a childhood. So he, that is so significant. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. that he, yeah. he had to endure that. And so, uh, and certain, uh, there, he's not the only one that had to endure, yeah. pay that kind of price. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not necessarily the same price of him being, uh, having a childhood, yeah. but just being a regular person. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I remember yeah. uh, going to the Yankee game with Paul Simon. Right. And, and so Paul just wanted to be, you guys didn't go, but yeah. me and a couple yeah. of the All the guys. Went. They and were we, prejudiced against the Lakers. <laughs> no, you guys, they didn't want to go to the baseball <laughs> game. They didn't want us to. They didn't want to go to the, the baseball game. I did. Game. But Paul wanted to go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wanted to be left alone on time. <laughs> on days and, off on a tour, yeah. leave me leave alone. alone. <laughs> and we, and we, walked in, we, we walked into the to Yankee Stadium. And all the cameras, they got the big screen up there, and all the cameras went whoop, right on, right on Paul. You know, and he yeah. was like, Orrin, I just wanted to come to the game. I said, Paul, this is the price that you have to pay. Yeah, this, That's the real the part price. of it. There's a yeah. price that you have to pay. You know, yeah. and so even though the other aspects of, of entertainment are there and everything is, it's still a price to pay. Yeah, Michael yeah. couldn't even drive a car because when we were working on Thriller one time, he was late and he's he usually got there pretty early in the morning we we would work at night just alone with him and then he would he'd still turn up in the morning right steven by like not 10 o'clock yeah, maybe right you, you, we were, we were come to the studio Quincy. After so he's yeah. not showing up and everyone's getting really nervous like where is he what happened we're, we sent the car to pick him up he decided he wanted to drive by himself wow. <laughs> sure enough he drove a beat up, a beat up old car because he didn't want to be in some fancy car, and he got a flat tire on the Ventura Freeway. Oh, oh no! So he yeah. had to call the security guy, and it was like a real big deal because people they were slapping wow, him on the yeah. side of the freeway. Even like you can't do it. He couldn't really do anything. And I think what you guys said really just you we don't appreciate sometimes just being like what 
when normal nothing's going people. on. Like Maxine, yeah. you want to be just left alone or normal and just do something simple, go to the park, jog, whatever it might be. I think there was a voice yeah. in him that that's, he spoke to normal people maybe because he, he related like that's what he wanted to be. I always thought that. Yeah. And Steve, that is to your point. That. Steve, that is to your point that you were saying earlier. It made me so much think about that moment because then that's what allowed him to feel comfortable around yeah. us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there was a, a certain level of peace where he didn't have to be Michael. No. He yeah. could just be yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and then we, we uh, the way we're our mother too. raised us, yeah. yeah we are. So yeah. we just very regular. I don't care if you're the garbage man or you the king it. of the world. Everybody's the same Everybody's with us. And that's, yeah, that's the way my mama raised us. Join us for the next episode of Michael Jackson's Thriller album, Stories in the Room, with your hosts, Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Watch our extended interviews on youtube.com forward slash at Stories in the Room. Audio only interviews are available on all podcast networks. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Stories in the Room. For the latest news and links, visit the website, storiesintheroom.com. This podcast is produced by Christian D. Brune and David Wolf, recorded by Autovita Studios. Additional recording by Ben Rackless. Edited by Jay Spang and Sean Hedinger. Music by Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Michael Jackson's Stories in the Room.